the Monday means test. The best analyst in football is Lee Montagna. He's unavailable, so David King is here. Hello, Kingy. Are you going to join us? That's nasty. That's just nasty. <laughs> Spot on, but nasty. All right. I just wanted to welcome How you. Are you. How are you? Good? Good weekend of footy again. A a magnificent weekend of football. Now, we're going to spend a bit of time talking about Essendon going forward. The techs are flying through, Scotty. The Essendon ledge. Jack in Footscray. The reason why Essendon is still mediocre is because Merritt needs some help. Corwell and Durham have stepped up. But what is the vice-captain McGrath doing? Where's his accountability? And this, what is actually wrong with Essendon? Like, it's pathetic. So I know they're going to feature in our means test a little bit later on. And uh, this quite incredible ladder that we've got with 14 really teams. sad, isn't it? Percentage above 100. Mm. <laughs> well, your words, not mine. <laughs> no, it, it's an amazing season. That the ladder, you're right. What would you say? Top 14 teams? Yep. Above 100? Yep. First time ever? Yep. Well, 14 of the top 15. Above 100. First time ever. 15. Yep. Well... Let's talk a bit of footy. Let's get stuck into it. Should we get into the King's Gambit? Let's do it. Let's do it. I just wonder this morning. So when the alarm goes off at five thirty this morning, which coach would do you not want to be? As you open the eyelids, you've got to picture yourself as one of these guys. Who has the bigger uh, set of issues at, at hand? Is it Vossi that his team at the moment right now are just not at the at the same toughness levels that they've been over the last eighteen months? Is it is it Johnny Longmire who's probably seeing it as is this a talent issue? Is it the fact that Papley's not there and we're working uh, Mills and and um, Parker back into the team and Heaney's come off a little bit and Goulden's come off a little bit and, and Warner's come off you know, probably more than we thought uh, had a really poor performance on the way. Is it Nixie who's got to make some tough calls? You've got to make some seriously tough calls over the next couple of weeks to straighten this club back up. Is it Brad Scott who you've touched on a lot this morning with your, your first half hour? Um, so the so the alarm goes off at five thirty. Let, yeah. Let's say you know it, normally get eight hours sleep. I mean, how much sleep would John Longmore? Would he have got maybe seven hours? He's just starting to get a little bit restless. And Michael Voss maybe just the six hours for Voss. He's he's really starting Dimmer. to get a bit restless. What about Dimmer? Damien Harwick was yeah. agitated at the he's weekend. He's angry. He would have had angry night sleep mm. overnight. I mean, he's got he's got he's got a. a, a a collective group that's underperforming. So that's a that's a challenge. So I just don't know who has the bigger challenge at hand. And some of them are aiming for different things, aren't they? Like, you know, Vossi and, and, and Horse yep. and and, and uh, they're, they're looking at correcting to win a flag. I'm not sure Matthew Nix did sleep. I mean, yeah. he might not have slept at all at the moment. He maintains he's got the right group. He's, he's pointing to, to fix, do you think? What, what's with that forward line, do you think, with the Crows? We might oh, spend some time on that a little bit later on. Is. The forward line. It was perfect for Cornsy, wasn't it? He, he's fired so many bullets <laughs> at Tex Walker. Oh, but it's, it's not just that for me. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to the Crows later on. But I don't think it's just the I, – I think they need to shake the tree. It's not about it's not about one extra tall in the team necessarily. Mm. I just think their leadership group needs a, needs a real shake. Well, a volatile round in many ways. Who wasn't sleeping very well amongst the coaches under pressure, King? You got a text here. Luke Beveridge is still in bed asleep. <laughs> he would be. He's sleeping in. Oh, Bevo. Oh, how good's life if you're Bevo? Oh. He's, he's fought them all off, hasn't he? We're going to serve. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. This year. Good morning, the, G. He's saying hello. Yeah, he's, he's a good man. Hey, Sydney. So four of the last five they've now dropped. This one wasn't close, unlike the previous four which came via a combined total of 10 points. They were humbled at home, 39 points. Goalless in the first quarter, and the slow starts have been a factor. But then they've got rolling historically, and they didn't at the weekend. Four goals to three-quarter time. Injuries are now a factor. And I guess the suggestion of the fatigue that builds up when you're the pace horse for so long, Kingy. How are we to read Sydney is the big issue? Yeah, I, I think Sydney are pretty easy to work out. Um, if, if you take Corridor off them, if you take that uncontested marking game away from them, then you minimise the chances of Goulden, Warner and Heaney getting the ball. Because their ability to chip it around and, and, and take sort of only 10 to 15 metres with these kicks, they're really not going forward that much. It's more to, to bring the ball back in the corridor. I, I think they know internally that their forward six, particularly without Papley, is not as good as, as what the other um, contenders have got. So they need to do things a little bit differently to create an effective forward 50 model when they go in. So they need their star factor players to be delivering the ball. They need high quality from that, from those guys. So they need to come through a corridor. Any time they're forced down the line, they're vulnerable. And, and the dogs just own the air. You know, Lob, Jones was phenomenal in that first 40 minutes. Yep. 
yesterday. And then when it went forward in the air, they were they just contested marked themselves to victory. And Ugal Hagen was terrific and they had no match for him. Um Norton was was ever present. Darcy Darcy just does some things and you go, Wow, that's you know, how many can do that? How many can mark the ball at the highest point like he does? When he worked when he worked Grundy back into the fall line, back back and took that mark, I was yeah. like, Wow. Yeah, it was this good is, one. This guy's a player. And it's just clean. They just take him, just one grab mm. clean and it just they posed Sydney challenges that they couldn't they couldn't really handle. And you know, Papley out of that out of that team, it just makes such a big difference. And and how much how much does it impact their, their not just their forward fifty, but their ability to throw that wild card player in and centre bounces? Um, he's just a school creator. The domino effect of him taking the best small forwards, and now that goes to the next level player, um, and it, and it just shut them down. So I think it was eleven contested marks. So when you look at sixty percent of your score comes from turnover, right? And and the bulk of your turnover game is between the arcs, if not centre back. So that at half time, the Swans had kicked one point. From the turnover game, one point. Well, that that is that is just ridiculous. So they average sixty points a week from turnover per game, and they were one point at halftime. So it just shows you that the dogs had everything in order, mm. absolutely everything in order. They couldn't they couldn't move the ball without with uh, with any success or any any um, fluency. And I'd, I'd I'd take my hat off to Bevo because I, I just thought he he disarmed the Swans. As soon as that game started, they just they just looked like they were they were out of their depth, Sydney. And it was an, it's alarm bells a little bit because the competition are aware of this now. We're seeing more and more teams take off corridor. Um, everyone does it a little bit differently. Some do it by you know holding onto the footy and building the ball slowly and you know, dominating time in possession. But not not the dogs. They, they were comfortable to go to war uh, head to head. They backed their midfield to get it done, and they brained them at stoppage. Um, so that there's concerns everywhere right now for just uh, for John Longmuir, Longmire, horse, um, because I don't know I don't know where you start. So Melican gets injured; he's yep. out with a hamstring now. Rampy's out, and gee, they looked undersized. So now they're going to have to bring in players that are on the depth chart. Aaron Francis has to play, doesn't he? Well, where is he on the? So if Logan listed, McDonald goes back. You yeah. can't be having Logan McDonald as your key back going forward, can you? Can or can you? Well, we've seen Hipwood go back. Yep. We've seen Lob go back. Yep. We have seen it. Is it easier to bring a, another forward in that's maybe a six foot three or rather than a, mm. rather than someone who's probably not going to? I mean, Francis hasn't got the job done down back. So do you go there again, yep. knowing that he's probably not going to get it done, or do you try something different and have a look at McDonald down back for a little bit? But Amadi's got to get some form. We talked about him with Kane on Friday. He was the one putting the gun. He, he he's. His, his scoreboard impact has dropped right off since he's nine against Adelaide. He's, he's hardly been cited. And what about the big three? So maybe Errol Gordon was okay, but Heaney had it 32 times. What's happened to Isaac Heaney's intensity and, and, and cleanness and the one-grabbing nature of his play seems to have gone? And Chad Warner. What's happened to Chad Warner? Oh, the Chad just had a bad one. He just had a stinker. Um, don't know why, but he just he just had a, had a mare. But he, this has been a sort of, I reckon, three of the last four weeks for Isaac. And, and I think it's a long year when you go back in as a full-time mid. So he's never really done this across the course of his career. He's been a you know, a 70% forward, 30% mid type, and he, he's been able to do that really well. His first six weeks of the year were unbelievable. He was never going to be able to hold that level. But I, I, he looks tired to me. And I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe we just read too much outside looking in. But it looks like the season sort of caught up with him a little bit. I wonder whether it'd be, you know, worth just resetting him as a forward for a couple of weeks, and just particularly when Papley's not there, and see if he can get that that center, that pseudo centre half forward that he is. Maybe get that uh, maybe get that model up and rolling again. So if the big three have quiet days or they don't fire, are they in trouble? Do you think? Well, everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. Your stars, it's a star driven, star factor driven league. So. I, of course they are. It's not even. It's not even about getting volume. It's about having impact, isn't it? So you're not going to see Warner have another. What was he? Did he have eleven touches or something? Sixteen. Sixteen mm-hmm. was it? Yeah. I mean, he's not. He's not going to do that again. He's. That's just a a, a, a a mulligan, if you want to call it that. That's just a one-off poor performance. He hasn't been that player. Gordon worked hard. He, he dropped chest marks. He looked fumbly. Yeah. Didn't look like the same uh, same person. So. Now, look, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this. Um, what what John Longmire does, 
Um, but Papley's Papley's impact on this this team is he could he, he kicks three two or three himself. Yeah. He, he, he gives off two or three. And he takes that best ranked defender. So he may he may have a five, six, seven goal impact on this team mm. given his his uh, his absence. Yep. And he's out long term too. So watching from the stands. And he's off on the fire starter, isn't he, as well, which is which is telling. Gets them up and a bit. Of, energy, a bit. bit, of, bit of energy. Um maybe before we break, they got that wrong just before we, we might turn positive after the break. But uh, they got that wrong. Like I I know you were taken, as was I watching at home, the Geelong-North Melbourne game down at Blunston Arena. Now, we know what Geelong want to do with Tom Stewart. The opposition knows what Geelong want to do with Tom Stewart. How can it be that they can't do more or won't do more to stop it from happening? If you let a player of his quality just run around unopposed and do what he wants to do, there's not many players in our comp just do what they want to do for 120 minutes. And that's exactly what happened. I couldn't believe it watching it live. 32 disposals, 13 intercepts, 18 uh, contested possessions, which was a personal best. But he was just long down the line all yeah. day. Whenever the Gangaroos looked up, it, it didn't only he, he didn't only have just the in, intercept influence, he was a stop sign. They'd look up and go, well, we can't go down there because he's there again. So then to try and manufacture something else, turnover, trauma on the scoreboard. So his, his impact on this game was profound. I don't understand what the plan was going in, but and we heard the you know the coaches in the pregame say, yeah, no, we've got a we've got a plan for Tom, um, and we you know two, two or three options, and we'll we'll go through those as, as the game unfolds. I didn't see anything. Yeah, I didn't see any change. Gee, they're clever with it though, Geelong. Like, yeah, you got to give them credit. It's not overly difficult. But to he work drops out. off late from a stoppage, so he's in at the stoppage one minute. The behind the goals vision, I think you might have showed last yeah. night. He's in at the stoppage. Right before it's about to recommence, mm. and then he drops thirty well, meters. He's been back, doing that back. for six weeks. Oh, I know, but it must be hard. So, is it not kicking it to him, or is it making sure that you push up as a forward, even just to create a a but two why, on one there? But why take Something. the risk? Why, why, why not have someone accountable for him? He doesn't have to be your best player. Yep. Well, if you said that, if you said to Cam Zerha, mate, wherever this bloke goes, back shoulder, your back shoulder, and you beat him when the ball arrives, and you don't leave him early. Well, teams have been doing it. Yeah. So, so what's the where's the mystery? Mm. I don't understand the mystery in this matchup. I really don't. I mean, if Chink Otter was there, what, what would he be doing? Yep. He'd be going with him all the way. So I, I thought it was a really poor um, decision. Uh, and again, we keep saying it: don't lose games on a Wednesday when you've got full clarity of what's coming at you and you, you've got exposed form. You, you know the role. You, you, this was hardly a shock that Tom Stewart was going to play with this matter. So I thought it, they had a bit of a stink at the Kangas coach's box. It doesn't hurt them. Where we are on the table, it doesn't make any difference. But um, it was a bad call. The so-called easy fix for Carlton that's about five or six weeks in the making that's proving to be not so easy after all, Kingy. <laughs> well, you feel this, but I, 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 I look at Carlton and I, I, last year, in the back half of last year, they were, they were bashing teams. They were humiliating teams with how tough they were. And it wasn't just one man. It wasn't just Patrick Cripps. It was all of them. They, they had this Carlton crew that were hunting in packs, and they were just they were just savage. They really were. And and it took them a long, long, long way. And, and I think when you've got that sort of model, um, it just it just can consume the club. And this is who we are. And we front up, and and we can feel when they can't handle it in game. You know, you just they make you proud when they play like that. They've played like that this year. In fits and starts across, the, the, I reckon, the first dozen weeks. I know you're a little bit down on them at the moment. Don't be, don't, don't be shaking your head. But the last six weeks, or even since round 12, so their contested possession profile, they were dominant, plus 114 for the first 11 weeks. And that was AFL number one. AFL number five since, plus 52. Now, that's still a pretty good number. But this has to be the reason that they win the flag. So this can't be AFL five. It has to be AFL one because I don't think they're good enough elsewhere. I don't. I don't know if their forward fifty absolutely works like everyone thinks it does because you see the magnets down there. I'm not sure their back, uh, their back half is as good as what we think it is because you see the magnets down there. So I think if they are going to win it, this has to correct and it has to correct in a hurry. So in the second half, yep, they beat Port Adelaide at contested possession plus one, and they beat them at mid zone clearances, which are the ones that really matter between the arcs. Plus one, that, that can't they can't survive on plus ones. It's got to be it's got to be dominant for Carlton to be the team that uh, they aspire to be. So right now, 
They've got some work to do. They're leaving it all to Captain Carlton. Sam Walsh's numbers might look good. Hewitt's numbers might look good. But they're not, they're not with the same anger and the same intensity uh, as what they've been in the past. They've told Cherry he's not a first pick midfielder and have moved him around. They've told Kennedy he's not in there and have moved him around. And I just wonder if they've rocked the, their own boat. Have have they? No doubt. Have they now got to a position where they go? Oh, hang on. Now we're going to have to go back to people that we've told them they're not good enough in the in the recent few weeks. I don't think Adam Chera attended a single centre bounce at the weekend yeah. on a Friday night. Yeah. Played at halfback and not for the first time. So they've, for whatever reason, he's playing back. Matt Kennedy had to play as a pseudo forward because of the Harry Mackay issue, which we'll come back to. Hewitt is Hewitt and he's important, but he doesn't move the needle. And then there's Sam Walsh, who hasn't been given a free reign to run around without a tag in many games this year. Now, the weekend was one of them. He had 15 and five clearances to half time, And I thought, well, they've made a mistake here, Port Adelaide. They've gone to Patrick Cripps instead of Sam Walsh. And then in the second hour of the game, Sam Walsh has eight and one clearance in the second half. So I know I know they had a short break and I know they're, they're a little bit Were banged. they gassed? I don't. Well, that we don't know. That, that we can only assess what we see. We can only assess performance, and we can't. We can't start making excuses all the time. This is not a one week discussion. Is is the point that I was going to make? This is across the last four to six weeks. So unless this corrects, they'll just be a. They'll just have another nice year. They'll have another nice, uh, entertaining season. Played some good footy. You know, took took people along for the ride. But at the end of the day, it'll run aground. So they they have to get this anger back. This absolute violence when they're in traffic, and I'd, I would be I would be showing vision of last year. I would be showing vision of the last probably what eight weeks of last season, mm-hmm. where they just went on this tear, and everyone feared playing Carlton. They don't fear playing Carlton anymore. Their back line, they just look, they look lost. They look like they can't get a hand on their opponent. They don't understand whether they, are they attacking the footy, are they defending, are they are they one on one, are they sliding. You know, is, is Weedering absolutely the man like he was last year? I don't, I don't think he is. Um, so they've got, they've got a lot of, lot of things to work on, but most of them revolve around being tough, being, being as, as tough as you were last season. The debate is for New Vision Clinics. New Vision Clinics, keyhole laser vision, next generation technology. Call one 800 20 I think Jacob Weedering is when he's not getting – he's on record pace for the amount of corkies uh, in, in a single season, but – it's who sits in and behind him as that key back post. I mean, there's a text here from someone saying, how much would Weedering like to wind back the clock and have uh, Liam Jones standing beside him in that Callum back line? The impact of COVID is far-reaching. That's from M. But all jokes aside, I think coaches plan for this. But at the weekend, it was the most open, I think, a rival coach has been in Ken Inkley saying, well, we know Jacob Weedering's Jacob Weedering, but how else can we expose Carlton's back line? Now, how many second key Tall backs have they trialled in that space? The Marchbanks of the world, the Kemps, the Durdens. Um, they, they've all come and gone as far as the second fiddle goes, and they haven't been able to stand up to back Jacob Wiedering up. So I think that's an issue. The yeah, midfield's I, an I issue. I disagree with you there. I, I disagree with you there. He, Jacob beats his man, yep. which is terrific, right? How many innocent marks did he take on Friday night? Yeah, I, you, you can come up with a number, right? But it's not really – Carlton discussion is not really about the numbers is what I'm saying. So how much more because can – he can do more, you think? 100% he can do more. 100%. So compare him compare him to the top liners in the comp because that's what this guy is. Hmm. right? He, he, he'll be a very good player if, if he just has to beat a man because he'll do that. But this back line needs more than him just beating his opponent. So he beats Charlie Dixon. Well, terrific. What was Charlie going to potentially kick? Two, maybe three. Yeah, you know, they need him to be. They need him to be Jeremy McGovern. They need him to roll off and cover and assist and support and you know, like Liam Jones was on the weekend. That that's what mm. they need him to be. You know, the the the, the constant force in the air, the constant um, third man in to diffuse. And I know he's. I know I keep hearing about these corkies and all these sort of things, but. I'm I'm sure other players are carrying injuries across yeah, the competition. Yeah, no. We don't hear about, but every week we hear about uh, Jacob's corkies. Like I, I just think that they all need to accept that, yeah, you know, they've got to be better. They're they're good players. They're good commodities, but good's not going to win the flag. So, so they've got they've got a they've got a decision to make. Yeah, Kemp was the other one as well. I just uh, they just haven't convinced as that second that second tall key back. Battered and bruised, Mackay Acres, Martin and Boyd to return. So confident it will flip for us this week. Backing my boys in that text from uh, six oh two. Um, the other 
debate or point of debate, I think, sits with Port Adelaide and, yeah. and Ken Hinckley. I mean, it still shows their top end is still, in, for me, in the conversation uh, when it comes to the pointy end of proceedings. And I still think he's got them. I still think he's coaching them well. What do you see in Port Adelaide, who have given us a bit of everything this year? Yeah, oh, the ball movement stuff's really good. Yeah, they, we've always talked about that. They're probably, you know, their profile doesn't read as as a contender. It, it, it never really has. Um so they're, they're a difficult one because they do give you some luxuries when you have the footy, uh, but they find a way. And it's usually the key three in the middle that light up for a period. Horn Francis, when when he's in that mode, it's almost like he says, righto, time to go now. Mm. And, and, then he, and then he injects himself into the game. Like he can be quiet for 30 minutes, unsighted, and then something will anger him or something will get under his skin and he'll say, you know what, I'm, I'll bugger it, I'm going to go and sort this game out. And then when he does that, the whole thing shifts. And Butters is there and Rosie and these guys, they're all, they're all there ready to go. But it's almost like they wait for Jason to start it, to hit the switch. Yeah. And that's happened multiple times this year. Never, never at the start of games. I'd love, I'd love him to come out and just go bang. Massive game this week against Sydney. You know, they've got an opportunity to do that against the Swans, who have been really poor, uh, poor starters over the last eight weeks. So um, let's wait and see. But... Gee, he has such an influence on this team. I, I don't know. I don't know where where they where they go under Ken. I don't know whether they're a, you know a top potential top four side or a contender or not. But he's, he's you have to take your hat off to him. He's, yeah, he's fighting against the odds. And Zach Butters kept pretty quiet for a half. Then curiously, they moved the Chincotta tag to Rosie. He has a big third quarter. Then he goes back to Butters after that. But Zach just kept learning to play with the tag. I suppose he's a hard little bugger, isn't he? Yeah, Zach Butters. Yeah, he's a beauty. And he sets a standard. Um, and the George Yard is in good form. So they, they've, they've got a few players that are, that are in some, uh, some yep. solid form. So let's – Marshall to come back it's in. A big, it's a huge game this week. H- huge game. And, and we've seen what – we've seen what a, a – a loss can do in terms of the, the, the ladder positions at the moment. You just fall. You just fall out of the race really mm. quickly. Mm. So we'll wait and see how they go against the Swannies. I'm raising the pressure index today. Sammy, tell us the truth. Lay, run, run me the week with the Harry Mackay scenario and where it's where it's sat and where it sits. Uh, so he caught the hit against your old football club. Came off the field a little bit late for the AFL's liking, so that's why they issued them with a please explain. They were relatively satisfied with that response, which was we were dealing with other players at the time, hence yes. their delay getting Harry off. Harry passed the concussion test yes. in the end, so they got an official reprimand, not completely let off, but a reprimand with no fine. The Eric Hipwood, uh, the Eric Hipwood situation um, up at uh, up at Brisbane was. Um, a, a fine given that, um, sorry, Harris Andrews, a fine given that there was a bigger delay in getting that player off the field. And um, and they both got told from the concussion spotters in the arc to get their players off the field. Now, then Harry McCoy was retested at the club, trained on Wednesday fully. Michael Voss said he's fine to go. He woke up with a virus on the Friday morning. They gave it to as late as they possibly could, and they decided he was too ill to take the field. Now, every single person of authority at, at Carlton has stressed that is the case, so we take them at face value. And now, though, there's another line of inquiry via the Why? AFL back to the Blues. Well, they want to check the nature of that illness. We can have delayed onset concussion. We can have headaches. Oh. We can have migraines. So that's open to the AFL right. now, and we haven't got an answer, I don't believe. So we're opening the inquiry again. They announced that. We, we said that on Crunch Time Saturday. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Are you not happy with that? I know. I'm just looking forward to seeing where the inquiry takes us. As are we and, all. And you're getting a lot of feedback on here. It reminded me of Kamal, some of the stuff that's coming through. Why are people so unkind? <laughs> they are very unkind. They're coming for you. Isn't there a podcast? Don't shoot the messenger. Uh, the pressure index, the pressure index here on the Monday Meads Test, thanks to Jamison Irish Whiskey Gather Round. I'm led to believe they were out. They featured in PFI, the Bombers, not too long ago. They might have had a couple of appearances in the pressure index. But the matter's out of the hangar, please, Kingy. Well, wow, let's, let's call a spade a spade. St. Kilda don't score. Like the way they did against the Bombers on the weekend, they just don't do that. They, you know, fourteen goals at, th- at three quarter time. That's only happened three times in the last six years. Have they been fourteen goals at three quarter time? Um, it, it, the story is Essendon because of because they're, they're a power club. They've they've recruited in the off season to be better than this, to be a better model than this. And right now, defensively, they look they look lost. They look like they're. 
their their setups, their their cohesion, it, it certainly isn't there. You wonder what the plan is supposed to look like and why it looks so disjointed week on week. We've had them in, in the pressure index because we didn't think this would keep coming. We didn't think that it could get worse than last week, and you know what? It did. And this is – it's not just alarm bells because – it's not an easy fix, this, because they've got enough talent there. I keep saying this is not a talent issue. This is like, this is guys not knowing how to assist and help each other. It's guys releasing at the wrong time. How can that be? Because it was trending in in every every possible management in a me- measurement in a positive way halfway through the season, and it's fallen off the cliff thereafter. How yeah. can that be? Well, they were really quite organised in their press and, and, and getting set behind the ball. I love when Ben Mackay is the last man in the chain. Now he's for some reason he's he's closer to the to the stoppage than he is the, uh, his defensive goals. I don't understand that. I don't understand why Ridley pr- prior to injury. I don't understand why he's not the the half backer that would uh, that would intercept a la Tom Stewart. Um, and and Laverde is your bits and pieces guy. It, they wanted that to be Zach Reed, but he's again he's injured or, or not in, in the team. So w- why don't they? And you're going to have to have that defender that's a bit vulnerable. Like you talked about Kemp before. Everyone's got one that's a little bit vulnerable and needs that third man in support. That can be Laverde. But more often than not, he's he's in the goal square um, on a threat and Mackay's 40 metres away. I I just don't understand the positioning. Um, And I think it's it's one of those things that needs an off-season now to correct. It's very difficult to change your defensive system in – the given year, when you only have what? How many hours on the track would you have? But I thought all their their team defence had improved, that this was getting the big tick again halfway through the year, that the the Essendon had finally bought in defensively after all the frailties and all the Swiss cheese sort of um, defensive blunders over the journey, that they had finally knuckled down, that the penny had dropped. And yet we see them at the weekend, they have three more inside 50s than the Saints, Mm. and the Saints take 20 marks inside 50 to 7. And they rack up 133 uncontested marks at Marvel Stadium. How could, that's just not a buy-in at all. That's just not at the races. No, it's not. And, and it's too much been left to too few. And I made the comment last night. I just, I just wonder if you have to flush these guys out. The ones that, the ones that just sit behind Zach Merritt. Like Merritt does all the talking. He faces the media. He, he's the, he's the, the, the the one they wheel out when things are going you know, a little bit uh, awry. I just wonder whether you run run the others out and say, okay, you know what, you're part of this. You're, you're a leader here. Go, you go and face the music you, and then see if you can you know, elevate your buy into what we're trying to do over a weekend so we don't have to have these conversations. We don't have to defend one another for the 30th time in 10 years. You know, it, enough's enough at Essendon. It has to stop. And, and I... I just don't see the investment in in team at Essendon that you see at other places. Like if you if you the St Kilda Footy Club don't they don't have the talent that Essendon's got. They don't, and they brain them. They don't have the carrot either. They don't have finals on the line. Exactly. Like spot on. So so what is what is it that's missing? So I think you've got to, at some stage the only thing you can do is is elevate the the the, the selection of players to to, to absolute importance. And if you're not prepared to play the Essendon way, what we're asking, the non-negotiables, the standards, then you don't play. You're out. And I don't care how much you're on and what draft pick you were and all those sorts of things. If you're not prepared to play the way we need you to play, you're out of the team. You lose your position. I don't see that happening enough Mm. at Essendon. Well, Jordan Ridley's going to miss, but that's not the one they want, of course. He's got no. the hip flexor, so he's out of the side going forward, uh, at least this weekend coming up. And and this is all after what Brad Scott said last week was the gory review. So, I mean, what sort of what does this review look like today after that? Yeah, and can we just touch on the Saints for a sec? Because uh, Rowan Marshall's in really good form, hitting the scoreboard, terrific. Sherman was ter- – how good was um, – Sherman. Sherman, sorry. Sherman yeah, was – The Sherman, I call him Sherman. Sherman. He was terrific, wasn't Sherman, he? Sherman, 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 Sherman. Yeah, he was amazing, wasn't he? Well, I can't wait to speak to him later on. I, you got I him? Yeah, and I know um, your old uh, sparring partner on a Friday, uh, Kane Corns, was big on him as well. But his movement, his marking, his yeah. energy, his conversion. No, he was, uh, he was outstanding. And it's probably – the most influential game I've seen Owens have for, for quite some time. I, I thought he was going to have this sort of year, given his preseason. So he, he was he was terrific. Caminiti did his thing. So without Max King, 
is the question that all Saints fans are asking. Got a I text mean, along those lines here earlier. Did you? Are they better without are the Kings men? Better without the King? Why are people so ungainly? No, they are unkind. Um, look, I. It's a good discussion, though, isn't it? I mean, can you use him in a different way when he comes back? Is there a different role for Max? Because it doesn't look like this ne- this ball movement model necessarily suits him. Mm. Um, but that's a, I mean, it's a good lever for, for for Ross to be able to pull and, and and certainly emotionally. Hey, look, this is what we're doing without you. You come in and play your part here, and regardless of the the level of talent this guy has. Uh, it was terrific. Well done to the Saints, and they should enjoy this. 108 points. It's a big number for the Saints. I'm not sure Cal Wilkie gets the credit he deserves Cal outside Wilkie. the club either. But yeah. As a one-on-one defender, he's an absolute marvel. Yeah, and he's Josh rock Battle. Solid. Josh Battle, the same. Look, can't lose Josh Battle, can you? It's a big one, isn't it? So 25 years of age. there? Oh, no, I think it's he's legitimately torn. So yeah. this is Hawthorne coming out. St Kilda coming just as hard to try to convince him to stay. He's going to get a pay rise either way. So forget that. I just think listening to Ross more and more in recent days and weeks with his press comments, really selling the, the message around environment, great club environment, almost almost selling the vision of the club through the media that this is, they're trying to become a destination club. They might not have the, the sort of uber, the sex appeal that some of the other clubs have, do they? But pointing to the AFLPA surveys and, and job satisfaction, it's almost like he's selling the vision each and every time he fronts the media. And, and they've had a battle on their hands to keep Josh Battle. All right. I've seen you on the tiles. You know what you're doing. And you know what you're doing around PFI, preliminary final integrity. Who are we thrusting into the PFI seat? Uh, we're talking about the doggies today because uh, there's been a fair bit of change since our man uh, Rory went down back. So... Um, they're now the second best defence in the competition, conceding only 68 points a week over the last, oh, well, since he went back. So what's that, the last six weeks? Um, North he, Melbourne was their first outing with him was, as a key back. It yep. was. Um, he's top three in the competition for intercept marks in that period over the last five weeks. And what in tandem now with Jones, I just think that they've corrected this, this spine almost immediately. They just needed one big body that is an intercept mark or a centre half back, and we've been craving that. For, for quite some time. And when you look at their spine, Jones, Lobb, English in the ruck, Jamara and Norton, either which way, and Darcy has that, you know, just, just left of the spine there. Um, it, it, is, it is probably the best in the comp. I, I think right now that's the best spine in the competition. Best spine in the comp. Yep. Doggies. Yep. Do, and do you think that? I do. Yeah, absolutely I do. I think Rory Lobb, and that this was the first game, wasn't it, that we've seen him alongside Liam Jones, could be. And Buku as well. So there's three intercepting markers is absolutely crucial. And Ed Richards in and around the ball. I know we've spoken about him a lot, but he makes a massive difference. So they're the hardest team in the competition now to turn a possession into a score against the Dogs. And we haven't said that for a little while. Wasn't so that the big criticism around Bevo? 100% He won't, was. he can't defend. Well, he, His sides don't defend. Well, he had to do things differently because he necessarily didn't have the spine. But this has come along quickly with the father sons and, and academy selections of Jamar and and Sam uh, Darcy. So this is this has happened really quick. But you can't score when you go in against them, and that's largely because of um, their back six holding up around Jones, around Norton. Um, we, we talk a lot about their counterpunch with Dale and, and those sorts of guys. They're in reasonable health. There's still a couple to come back, but they're not for a couple of weeks. But the move of, of Ed Richards since round six when he went inside, uh, it's had such an effect, a domino effect on this team. So Trelaw doesn't get tagged on the weekend because they go after Richards. So Jordan goes to Richards. Trelaw finds his way into 40 touches. Seven score involved. Where do you have Trelaw? Like, do you have him in the All Australian forty he, easily at the moment? He is a lock for yep. the All Australian team. If he's not the in team, there, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he has to be in there. I mean, it, this guy's just done it week after week. So sometimes teams, the way teams play, can fatten your numbers. So Brisbane low disposal team, you're not going to get, you're not going to average thirty two touches a week. But if you play for the Dogs, high handball numbers, all those sorts of things, you can. But the, the game now is about weaponry. What are you What are you bringing that the opposition has to stop? They've and always had the weapons. This is the thing, isn't it? They're all coming together now, aren't they? But I said off the top, they've finally found the launch codes to have them firing all together at the moment. Jamar Ugehagen is the number one score involvement player in the competition in the last three weeks. 12 goals in the last three weeks and almost uh, he could take them to the stratosphere, this guy. Yeah. He's just exploding at the moment. If you that, could, that's pennies dropped. If you could pick one player if you're a Dogs fan to, to oh. just continue this form 
through September, he could just take him to the promised land. How was the don't argue? Oh, yeah. It was just like, get out of my way. I'll just kick this on the right. It didn't matter who they played on him. He just looked He just looked more athletic than them. And I, I, love, the, I love the work of um, the unsung heroes in that forward line. Riley West, what he's doing against the best um, intercept defender or runner. He's done it all year, he's hasn't taken he? taken to the square. He's embarrassing them. He's pulling their pants down. He's been terrific. What, Cody Waitman, I'm telling you, he, he, more and more I watch him – I know he's a little bit different, but he has a Toby Green type impact on this forward line. He can rear up and mark it. He can crumb. He can harass. He can get in your face. He brings this team a bit of an edge that um, that they don't uh, otherwise have. And right now, uh, the way that this guy's coached, you know, he's beaten Carlton, Geelong, and Sydney the last three weeks, and the, and the way that they've built this season and built momentum, gee whiz. It, what, what will if Hawthorne make the eight, right? So to Hawthorne for Hawthorne to make the eight, they got the Giants this week, and then mm-hmm. I think it's Carlton. So if they make the eight, Carlton only have to drop one game. I, I think they could easily finish. They could finish fourth. The Dogs. If you look at the if you look at the last month of football, if Hawthorne continue to win, they'll knock off the teams that are just above the Dogs. And obviously, I think the Dogs will um, keep doing what they're doing. If they found their way to fourth, game on. So they've got Melbourne, a five-day break coming back from Sydney. I mean, this will be – This will be. I mean, we've seen clubs fatigue this year, so this could be a test this Friday night. Then they've got to go to Adelaide. Then they've got North. Then they've got GWS to finish at Ballarat. So it's not a horrific fixture by any stretch of the imagination. No. Closing against North uh, at Marvel, the Giants in Ballarat. And um, I was going to talk to you about uh, Bailey Dale, who got the wake-up call at the start of the year. And since then – has been absolutely unbelievable off halfback. So that's another one you've got to keep uh, a mind to when you play against the dog. Now, Kane was savage on on Bevo at, at that stage of the year. Now, it's, it's impossible to say whether you're wrong or right. They're just opinions. That's why we that's why we love Cornsy. Um, do you get the response out of the player because you drop them, or or should you just play them because they're in your best twenty-two? Well, I think, I think Bailey Dale's on record as saying that that was a shot across the bow that did him some. That did him some service. So we're talking about other clubs, right? We're talking about Essendon. We're talking about Adelaide. You sometimes just got to drop one. Mm. Yeah. You know, what's it, what's the say? Execute one. Educate Sacrifice a thousand. Sacrifice one to educate a thousand. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's that's happened at the Dogs, and it hasn't happened elsewhere. Yeah. So I, I think he's uh, he's just been. A, he's had a wonderful year, Bevo, and it's all coming together nicely. The curiosity. The Giants, like, is it real? I mean, inconsistent week to week, inconsistent almost quarter to quarter. The coach acknowledges in the aftermath of the win over Melbourne that there is still a stack of stuff to work on. They've got a couple of stars to come back. They're my curiosity, the Giants. Yeah. I'm happy to be proven wrong, but I just can't see it with the Giants. I I just can't see it. And I know they they got the job done the weekend. I feel like their handball game's manufactured at the moment. It's it's, It's not fluent. It doesn't appear natural to me. Like it's just sort of, it's like there's an overemphasis to give the next one, and it's just a little bit. It's still rusty. Um, and I know they've got Hogan's in great form forward of the ball and one four in a row. Yeah, yeah, they've won four in a row. But I just still feel like they're miles off the best teams. What sort of game are we going to get? They've got Hawthorne at home. Uh, it's in go. Canberra, admittedly. There we go. But what a game this is in Canberra. Well, this is the one. It's just show us, where, you know, whether you've. You've got the the game at home or one of your home venues to to get it done. Hawks mm. on the road. This is a game they would have thought four weeks ago they'd almost pencil in, but right now it's the hottest ticket in town. The Hawks, see they they're uh, amazing to watch, aren't they? Playing with such dare. How are they doing at the Hawks? It's amazing. They just ran them ragged at the weekend. Absolutely ran them ragged over there. Well, they're excited. They're they're invested. They're they're, they're all thinking, okay, if we just do our little bit yeah. each. And I heard the boys talking about this morning the spread of contributors. Like no one's really having a, a great a glut of possession. It was it was half the team sort of in that low to mid twenties. Um, McDonald's a freak. I, I watched him during the preseason. We talked about him a lot. Connor McDonald, I, I love what he does because he, to me, he reminds me of a of a very young humor cluggage, mm. and they always one step forward when the ball is won by their team. They're already in a in, a, in an aggressive position straight away. So I wonder if he can do a bit more midfield uh, time as well as that high half forward role, but. Having an, having an influence on the school board, those smalls. And a few nominations for the Charles Royce when it comes to your contestant marking award uh, initiative uh, as well. The Charles Royce, Marbior. Yeah. Plenty of nominations for him coming through as well. He's been a, he's been a he solid really acquisition. Really doesn't he? All right, Kingy. At four, I've got Fremantle. 
Okay. Uh, coming in forward, just think they're really professional. Sarong's gone crazy. Um, Brayshaw in the middle, just that that corridor run, all damage. And Josh Tracy, I just, I know that everyone's spoken about what he's doing forward or centre, but the more you see it, the more you love it. They're, they're just in really good form. Okay. I'm going the Western Bulldogs are four. Can't put them one, but I've got them four. Four and coming with a bullet. Three, they're at three for me, the dogs. I, I just... They they could end up at one like Jared's got them if they can yep. uh, if they can just get a couple of teams above them to slip up which you know, Hawthorne I think will hold with the Western Bulldogs fate in their hands if they finish top four look out but uh, all things firing best spy in the comp potentially the best forward in the comp and probably the best midfielder in the comp. I've got Fremantle uh, at three. Love what they're doing with Brayshaw and Sarong in the middle of the ground and Tracy your man up forward so Fremantle at three. Sydney I'm not jumping off. I'm just waiting for Papley to come home uh, and to get back into this lineup. And I think Heaney forward, find another midfielder. Uh, Sydney not giving up on them at two. I've got Swans at two as well, which must mean we share alignment with our top two. You've got Brisbane at one? Absolutely. Yep. Brisbane at one for me as well. Kingy. Rainer going crazy. <laughs> I love Cam Rainer when he's in this mood. Always good fun with you.